Hi guys, this hackerank challenge is called recursive digit sum and it's going to be the first recursion coding challenge on my channel. So here we have an integer and we need to find the super digits of the integer. Now a super digit has two definitions. The first one is it's a single digit, meaning that any number up to nine is a super digit. The other definition is that the super digit of any number X is equal to the super digits of the sum of the digits of X. Now I know that this can sound a bit confusing. It's almost as if the instructions were recursive in nature, but they give us an example here to clarify what they mean. So let's say we have a number like this, 9875, that is 9,875. What we need to do is pass that integer to a function and add up the digits. So we have nine plus eight plus seven plus five, and we get 29. Is 29 a single digit? No, it's not. So it's not a super digit. So what we need to do is process 29 again. So we have 29, that will be two plus nine, and we get 11. Is 11 a super digit? It's not. So we have to process 11 as well, and we get one plus one, and that gives us two. Is two a super digit? It is because that is a single digit. So in our function, we are going to have two parameters instead of one. And this is what you can see here. I will explain my solution in a moment, but basically the parameters are going to be n, which will be a string representation of our integer that we need to process, and also k. So k is going to be the number of times that we have to concatenate our string representation of our integer. So let me switch to my notepad here because I want to make these instructions clearer. I think it's better if I show you this instead of going through the whole instructions that they have right here. So let's say our number is this one again, 9875. And I have these double quotation marks to indicate that this is a string because n is of string type. And then we have k where k is equal to four and four here is going to be an integer. So what we need to do is concatenate this four times. So we will get that string plus that string plus that string as well. And that will give us this long number here. If you look at this again, you will see that this is pretty much the number here, 9,875 repeated four times. And you can see 9,875 and then again, 9,875 and again and again. And the support digit for that number is eight. How do we know it's eight? They have an example right here. So let's say we pass in that long number right here. We pass it to our super digits logic here. We will add up all the digits together and we will get 116. And you guys can go ahead and verify it. But if you add up all the digits in that number, you will get 116. But 116, that's not a super digits because it is a three digits integer. So we have to add up the digits of that number as well. In that case, we will get one plus one plus six, and that will give us eight. Is eight a super digit? It is because that is a single digit. So the super digits of that long number that you see here is eight. Now, one last thing to note is that that number here, 116, which we got by adding up all the digits in our long number, you can also get it like this. So you would get nine plus eight plus seven plus five, so that is adding up all the digits of the original integer and you will get 29. And then you will simply have the results times K. Now, if I scroll up again here, you can see that K was four for our example. So 29 times four, that is 116. And then you will get the same integer as a result. I think it's faster that way. All right, so now I'm jumping to my logic here and this is the function int super digits. It takes in a string called N and an integer called K. And we have our base case here. So the reason why we have this is because we don't want our recursion to go on forever. So we need a certain condition or certain logic that will stop the recursion from going on. And here we will only stop the recursive process if we obtain a single digit. So that is what this line does. If the size of n and n is a string, so if the size of n is equal to one, then we know that we have found a single digit. And in that case, we can simply return that digit as an integer. So because n is a string, we need to call the s2i function in C++ and pass it n so that we can get n as an integer and not as a string. 
So again, if you are confused, well, just look at the return data type of that function and it's an int. So you can't return the string. You need to return an integer. Next up, I'm creating this long variable here. I'm calling it super. The reason why I have it as a long type and not as an integer is because some of the test cases in that HackerRank challenge will deal with really, really long numbers. And so you're going to get uh, wrong results because of the conflicts in data types. So I'm having this long variable that I'm initializing to zero. And this is the important step right here. I'm now looping through my n string because n is a string representation of our integer that we need to process. So I'm now iterating through its characters, character by character, and adding them up. So I'm saying here for every character that I am accessing by reference instead of n, I want to add it up to super. So super is of long type, so it's fine. I can add up two numbers and store them in super and update that super variable at every iteration. But this is the part that you guys might not understand if you're new to C++. So I have C minus 48. How did I come up with 48? Well, the first thing to note here is that I'm trying to get an integer and not a character. C is of char type, so C is a character. But C is a character representation of a real digit, a real uh, number. So what I want to do is have minus 48, and the 48 comes from the ASCII table. So um, you guys might be familiar with ASCII by now if you've watched my previous videos. But basically, if you scroll down all the way here to the second column, you will see that the decimal representation of the actual number zero, the actual uh, character zero, is 48. I don't know if you guys can see it. Maybe I can make my screen a bit bigger. But you can see that 48 here is the decimal representation for zero. So what I'm saying here is I want that character minus 48 to get the actual digits corresponding to that character. And I'm adding it up to my current value of super right here. Now, the next thing that I do once I have my super variable updated is simply have it times K. So I say super times equals K. And this is equal to me saying this. But again, base notation I think is more elegant. And this refers to what I explained here. Instead of processing that original number four times, we can simply process it once by adding up all the digits and having the results, which will be 29 times K. K is four, so we will get 116, which is equal to what they have here, except that they went the long route by adding up every single digit of the long number, the concatenation. So if we base ourselves on the 9,875 number here, this means that at this point, super is equal to 116. That's not a super digit. So what we need to do is process it one more time by passing it to our function. But 116 or the super variable is of long type. So we need to pass it to our function by calling the to string function in C++. And that means that we can now convert this to a string and pass it to our function again. So this is where the recursion happens. You can see here, I'm returning super digits and super digit is actually the same function. So this function is calling itself. So that's the concept of recursion in, in programming. And I might have a video in the future where I dive into recursion, how it works and how to deal with it in memory and all that. But for now, just know that we are passing our super variable to our super digit function again in the recursion process and we are converting it to a string. But this is the second parameter that might confuse you. I am passing one and one here corresponds to K. K is an integer. So why am I passing one? Well, that is because K is only needed here in the first step, because in the first step we have to concatenate. In other words, we have to repeat that string multiple times before we process it. So in subsequent steps, we don't need K anymore. So if we want to keep super intact in subsequent steps, we can simply multiply it by one when we call this super times k. Well, if we multiply it by one, it's not going to change. It's going to remain the same. And that's why I have one as my second parameter here. If it's not really clear to you guys, you can always leave a comment and I will try and explain a bit better. But I think you get it by now. So this will keep running until we hit our base case where we get the number eight. So first iteration, Super is going to be 116. I just want to clarify that. Second iteration, super is going to be equal to 8. 
So we will pass super again, which is eight. And at that point, this is going to evaluate to true. If n dot size equals one, it will evaluate to true because eight is a single digit. So we will simply return eight as an integer, not as a string. That's why I have s to i. So that's it. Let me now run this code. So we pass all the three sample test cases. And now I'm just going to submit this code. We have 11 test cases to pass. And we just passed all of them. So that's it for this coding challenge. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It was my first recursion video on this channel. So if you like this, please make sure you subscribe, turn on your notifications, leave your questions in the comment section, and I'll catch you next time. Bye.